Hi guys, this is Drew Brashler with DBB Audio. This video is going to be diving into the brand new one-to-one -one user patching. This is a brand new feature released by Behringer for the Behringer X32 in the version 4 firmware. So if you're not on the version 4 firmware, make sure to save all of your data to a USB stick and then update your firmware to version 4 and it will give you this new feature called one-to-one -one user patching. Now, what is user patching? Well, previous versions of the firmware have us routing in blocks of eight. Now, what does that mean? Well, let's go take a look at the routing section here. We can see that in our input channel block patch, we have these four columns followed by our aux in. So this is column one through eight, nine through 16, 17 through 24, 25 through 32. So this means that if I'm wanting to route something, I would need to select that in a block of eight, which means that one through eight channels, if I was to select some channels from my DL32, I would have to go select AES50A one through eight. And if I had to additional inputs, I'd want to go select the rest of them. Well, what happens when I have some local receivers, wireless receivers for some microphones that I'm wanting to have sitting at front of house? Well, I'd obviously want to use the local inputs on the back of the X32. Well, to do that, I would have to burn a whole eight channels. But what if I only have three microphones? Well, then those rest of those block of eight are not going to be used unless you decide to use those in some sort of way locally at the X32. I actually have a version of my routing worksheet here that I have filled out in the version three. So we can see that one through 24, like I have right here, is coming from my AES50A. Well, if I had these three local in microphones on one, two, and three, that would mean that 29 through 25 are going to be empty, and I'm not going to be able to use those unless I have other microphones that are sitting at front of house that I want to plug into that. Well, what user patching does allow for us is to expand that so I can take my user routing and plug in all the way to 29 and then use these last three microphones in a local. So I can actually do one-to-one -one patching, and I can forget about the blocks of eight. Let's go ahead and dive in and see how that works. The first thing that I'm going to do is in my input routing here, I'm going to select user in one through 32. The next thing I'm going to do is tab over to my card and select the same thing. Now let's continue to page over until we get to our patch, and we'll want to go all the way over until we get to user. Now this is going to be our new section that we'll have. And so we can see input and output, and I can page between 9 through 16, 17 through 24, 25 through 32 by rotating this knob. If I'm wanting to get to output, I simply press this, and then now I'm in the routing for the output of the user portion. Now you can see that there's 32 channels of input and 48 channels of output. That is because the console can accept 32 channels in, but on the way out, we actually have 48 channels available to us on the AES50 output. So we can use all of these 48 channels to send out over AES50 to any of our remote boxes or remote consoles. So let's go ahead and take a look just the inputs for right now. So we can see input one, and I'm going to select AES 50 and 1. And then the next one down, I'm going to select 2, and so on and so forth. So now that I have my last three inputs here, I can go ahead and select local in. 1, 2, and 3. So now when we go and take a look at all of the actual channels, we can see that when I'm paging through the channels, we can see AES50A, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And then if I page over to my channel 17 through 32 and select my channel 30, I have input 1, which is local, input 2, which is local, input 3, which is local. And if I go back to my 29, we'll see that it's coming from the AESA portion. 
Now, what's really amazing about the user patching is it doesn't have to be all in one line. I can put a local input next to an AES50A input next to a card input from the expansion card. So it's very flexible and can get as advanced routing as you need. But what's a practical sense of this? Well, what if I had a console sitting over in video control that had my video playback of my eight channels off of my video server playing into it? Well, what if I wanted to have that sitting here with my inputs? Well, I have an example of that. So I have onstage inputs from 1 through 21 on my AES-A coming off the DL32. And then I have eight channels coming in on AES-50B coming from my Behringer wing. And then I have three local FOH wireless microphones with the receivers sitting next to me at front of house. Let's go ahead and route this. So we can hit routing, tab over to user, and then we can go find the ones that we need to change. So 22, I'm going to select AES50B, one, and then two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So as we page through here, we can see that I have my AES50A 1 through 21, just like I have on my patch sheet here. And then I have AES50B 1 through 8. And then I have my local inputs 1 through 3 sitting here. So this is a very flexible way of making sure that you have all the inputs available to you from any of your remote stage boxes, any of your local I.O., and any additional AES50 attached consoles. So what if we wanted to use our output routing in a creative way? I was thinking of one way of doing this is recording multi-track audio to a laptop. Well, we could use 1 through 30 to record the actual channels coming off the stage, and maybe we had two extra inputs, that 31 and 32, that we weren't going to be using for our multi-track recording. But maybe we wanted to record our left-right stereo mix. So let's go ahead and do that. By default, the X32 has output 15 and 16 on the output of the XLRs as your left-right mix. So this is going to be a very easy way of doing this, is we can page over to our output, and we can scroll down to output 15. We can see this is main left in a post-fader sense, and 16 is main right in a post-fader tap as well. Next thing we can do is tab over to user, make sure to press this to get to our output routing, and then we can pull this from the same locations that we are pulling our local I.O. for. So in this case, I have all of my inputs coming from my AES50A, where I have my DL32, and so I'm going to select AES50A on all of these. So one, two, three, Okay, so now that I'm here at my output 31 and 32, I'm going to select from a different tab. I'm going to my, go to my category, go to output, and find output 15. And I'm going to select that. Output 32, I'm going to go output 16. So now what we can see is we can see that we have all our inputs coming from AES-A, 1 through 30, and then followed by our outputs 15 and 16, which is going to be sourced from our main left right. The next thing that we'll need to do is make sure that we're routing from the user output section to our card. So we can go and tab over to card, and then we can go select user out 1 through 8, 9 through 16, 17 through 24, 25 through 32. We can even scroll through and double check our output patch here. So what this is meaning is this is going to take all of my user output routing, which is coming from my AES50A from my snake box, so the DL32, and it's going to output this to my XLive card. Except 31 and 32 are going to be coming from my main left right. So this means when I hit record on my XLive card, any of my inputs coming into from the stage box coming into my console will then go and be recorded on my X Live card. And then 31 and 32, those channels won't be used except they will be, be recording my main left right. So this is going to be one very flexible way of using this user output section in a very creative way. 
If you decide to use the user output routing and have that for all of your AES50 devices that are connected to it, and you are still using the P16 system, make sure that on your user output routing on 33 through 48, that you have P16 outputs selected so that your routing will continue to be correct if you decide to not do this portion and you accidentally set all of your devices to be on 33 through 48 as the user routing, it would end up not being the P16s, and therefore your P16 monitoring system that you plug in via Ultranet at stage won't function the way that you're wanting it to. So make sure to keep that in mind. Thank you for watching this new video on the user routing. I am very excited about this new one-to-one -one patching. I think it's going to bring a lot of workflow ease to everyone that is using the Behringer X32 and additional devices. If you haven't checked out the rest of my videos, make sure to look at my new version for firmware tutorials on the Behringer X32. Otherwise, please like and subscribe to my channel, and thank you so much.